Hi, I am Sylvain Paquette, Account Manager for Draeger. Today, we intend to provide you with intermediate ECG interpretation knowledge, as well as give a refresher to advanced user. The approach called 7 plus 2 look at different segments of the ECG rhythm in seven steps to get to the plus 2 part where there is a conclusion of the patient heart condition which is compared to its previous exam when available. In the next slide, we will look at the first two steps, rhythm and rate. The ECG rate is the amount of time the heart will beat over a minute. The normal is situated between 60 to 100 beats per minute. It is easy to do a calculation on an ECG rhythm that shows regular interval. When faced with arrhythmias that makes it irregular, a device like a cardiac monitor and ECG card can come to an ND. Let's take a look at the visual representation of a heart contraction, a wave morphology called P wave, which is an atrial contraction, precedes every QRS complex. If it's not the case, we are faced with a dysrhythmia or arrhythmia, which we'll cover later on. The rhythm is typically regular, but varies slightly during respiration, and the P wave maximum height should be 2.5 mm. In order to calculate the rate manually on a printed rhythm strip, you start from the first grid square and calculate decreasingly until you get to the next complex. Cardiology rulers are available for this, but the information is also available from the cardiac monitor, ECG card, stress test, etc. The grid squares are separated in five smaller squares that have a length of 0.04 seconds. This is the representation of a full EKG. There are typically 12 different ways or leads to look at the heart which are represented here. In some instance, additional leads can be added to the patient back to do a 15 lead ECG or a right heart ECG if you add the leads on the right part of the torso. Most ECG reports in North America will be presented the same way, which is called 3x4. You have three rhythm ECG separated in four different leads of 2.5 seconds each to cover your full 12 leads. There is also a 10 second reference lead on the bottom, which is typically lead two. We then step into the conduction portion, which includes PR interval, QRS, and QT. An ECG complex is separated in six parts, which are used to differentiate the heart contraction sequence, P, Q, R, S, T, and sometimes U. P wave is the electricity starting point, with the PR interval called the atrial depolarization. The points QRS are the ventricular muscular fiber contracting to send the blood throughout the body. This is called ventricular depolarization while the QT is the ventricular repolarization. We'll cover only the adult category as there are differentiation with pediatric and neonatal population. The J point is used for calculation and coincide with the end of the QRS. This image is really helpful to explain the different steps of conduction. It is self-explanatory, but we'll review it to better understand the physiology behind the rhythm. The contraction is initiated from the atrial portion of the heart. As you can see in the P wave color scheme, the sinoatrial node, SA node, the atrial muscle, and the atrioventricular node, AV node, are all involved from the starting point. In the PR interval, we see that the His bundle, the bundle of branches, and the Purkinje fiber are also involved and could also be used in case of an atrial dysfunction to ultimately initiate a ventricular muscle contraction as seen in gray. The normal PR interval is situated between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. When it is longer than 0.22 seconds, it means that we are faced with an AV block. There are three degrees of AV blocks. First degree, second degree, which are separated in type one and two, and third degree or total block. A short PR interval can be seen in AV reentrant tachycardia like Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. 
We'll cover this further in the presentation. PR interval is also independent of the cardiac rhythm or rate. These blocks are all called arrhythmias. An abnormal rhythm is what is called an arrhythmia. Some are armless, but some are lethal. The most known being the asystole, an absence of pulsation. As seen in many movies, when a patient dies, it is easy to recognize with a flat line. Some other arrhythmias are atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, tachycardia, bradycardia, etc. Now we get back to the AV blocks. With a PR interval longer than 0 0.20 second, this rhythm is classified as the first degree AV block. This is a perfect example of a relatively armless arrhythmia. But what causes AV block? First degree block is a normal finding in an individual with no cardiac disease, and especially in athletes. It can be caused by ischemia or injury to the AV node or junction. Medication therapy is also a known cause, beta blockers, amiodarone, calcium channel blockers, etc. Inferior wall myocardial infarction can create blocks as well. But of course, hyperkalemia, which is an high level of potassium, can be a factor. We now move to the second degree block type 1. There is a PR interval prolongation from beat to beat until a QRS dropout. QRS complexes will cluster on a 5-4 or 4-3 ratio. Once there is a dropout QRS, the following PR interval will be the shortest of the sequence. Interestingly, the RR interval will also shorten every consecutive beat. The conduction disturbance in the second degree type block, Mobitz 1 or Venkebach, originate in the AV node. If isolated, it is relatively binning and not a pacemaker indication. Back to the conduction image, we can see the light blue waveform, which is related to the AV node within the PR interval. You can see in this example that the PR interval is elongating until the QRS block and that the RR interval is getting shorter as well. Causes of second degree type 1 AV blocks are first, a conduction delay within the AV node itself. Also, in cases of increased parasympathetic tone, this is a temporary condition, for example, cholinergic intoxication to insecticide, medication or medication intoxication to beta blocker, digitalis, veripamil, etc., is also a cause. It can be seen in acute inferior wall myocardial infarction, transient in the first 24 to 48 hour of infarction, most commonly associated with an AV nodal ischemia, which is secondary to occlusion of the right coronary artery. From this image, you can see in black and white the irrigation system of the coronary arteries, the plumbing, while in color is the conductivity of the system, the electricity. The left coronary artery divides itself in the left anterior descending artery, LAD, and the circumflex, CX, while the right coronary artery, RCA, provide irrigation to the AV node, which might block if the artery gets occluded. In a second degree AV block type 2, also called Mobitz 2, you'll also see a QRS dropout, but the PR interval is constant. It is a class 1 pacemaker indication, as it is more likely to progress into a complete art block. But what causes second degree type 2 AV block? There's acute myocarditis, anterior myocardial infarction, and disease to the left coronary artery. As this condition occurs in the bundled branches, which are irrigated by the left coronary artery. Third degree AV block is potentially lethal if not treated. There is an auriculoventricular dissociation and no relationship between P waves and QRS complexes while regular. The atrial rate can be up to 100 beat per minute, while the ventricular contraction can be below 40 beat per minute. And what causes this third degree AV block? There is a 5.8% incidence which is in the early period of an acute MI. 
It is twice as common with inferior and posterior infarction as opposed to an anterior MI. It can also be congenital and, of course, can be induced by medication and medication intoxication like beta blockers and amiodarone. AV reentrant tachycardia is a congenital malformation of the myocardial tissue, which creates a pathway between the atria and the ventricles. The association condition is then called tachydysrhythmia. There are three major forms, Langanen, Mahame, but the most common is Wolf-Parkinson-White. The normal conduction is represented here between the AV node and ventricular muscle. The accessory pathway located at the end of the Purkinje fiber going through the atria is sending the electricity in the wrong direction as would a short circuit in electricity. This is another representation of the heart where we can see that electricity would always use the shortest path available. This results in a different slope in the ECG rhythm where the P wave is bypassed. It can become lethal when it escalates from a slow rhythm to an atrioventricular tachycardia, then a ventricular fibrillation and ultimately to sudden death. The accessory pathway will serve as a two-way conductor, opening a conductive channel to drive the end of the electrical impulse from the ventricles back to the AV node. All the blocks we reviewed so far were abnormal conduction of the PR interval. In the next few slides, we'll develop on the QRS side. A normal QRS length is below 0.11 seconds. When a longer interval is seen, we are typically faced with left or right bundle branch block, electrolytical disorder, sodium potassium or chloride, idioventricular rhythm or paste rhythm. As the bundle branches are sending electrical impulse to both ventricles, if one of them is blocked, the electricity will use the unblocked branch, always using the easiest way, to stimulate the ventricle. The electricity will then use the muscular fiber to travel cell to cell in order to stimulate the second ventricle. A monofascicular block is located in one division of the branches, while the bifascicular block will block both divisions. A block can also be incomplete when the QRS length is borderline normal. In some cases, the term white QRS could be used when there are no visible bundle branch block pattern. The bundle branch block is linked right next to the PR interval and in the beginning of the QRS. We can see the yellow and orange waveform representing the bundle branch block and the Purkinje fiber. In order to detect which branch is being blocked in a monofascicular block, the turn signal trick is really handy. Using lead V1, locate the J point. J point is the end of the QRS complex where the S wave become isoelectric and determine if the previous 0.4 second are positive or negative. Just like the turn signal in your car, if you want to turn right, you move the signal up. In this example, we can see that from the J point, the slope is going down. So a left bundle branch block, just like you would do a left turn. In this example, we can see that from the J point, the slope is going straight up, so a right bundle branch block. The last part of the conduction section is the QT interval. The QT interval indicates the speed at which the ventricle are repolarized. When we analyze the QT interval, we use the QTC or corrected QT. QT interval will change with heart rate and will be shorter with tachycardia while longer with bradycardia. There are two formulas for QTC calculation. The following diagram provides a visual indication of the correlation. Bizet's formula overcorrects at high heart rate and undercorrects at low heart rate, while Friedericia's formula is more accurate on low heart rate but overcorrect faster. Measurement without a formula is also tricky. Start by drawing the baseline of the ECG rhythm, calculating from the Q wave until you reach the bottom of the tangent of the T wave, which is crossing the baseline. You see that it's a bit tricky, so the easiest way to calculate QTC is to use the ECG report calculation, which is readily available to clinician. 
A prolonged QT interval is dangerous because the cells are not fully depolarized and get stimulated by a new cycle, which can end up in a torsade de point, where the outcome is uncertain. Torsade de point is a French word for bundle of thread twisted, which is what the rhythm visually looks like. This is another example of torsade de point. In the next section, we'll cover the art axis. The art axis is the mean direction of the electrical depolarization of the ventricles. Beginning in the right atrium, proceeding to the left and right ventricles. The normal art axis is typically 30 to 60 degrees, but can be normal at negative 30 to 100 degrees. The termination of the art axis is done through the extremity lead only. The electricity traveling to a lead will lead positive deflection. Abnormal art axis can happen when the art itself is rotated, right ventricular overload, in presence of ventricular hypertrophy, in presence of dead myocard, myocardial infarction will leave dead muscle fiber when not irrigated, sometimes in conduction problems. In this case, the tallest R wave shows the direction of the axis which follows lead two with AVL as isoelectric lead. This example shows a totally different axis pointing toward AVR with lead 3 isoelectric. The first image shows heart axis deviation to the left in case of an inferior infarction. The second image shows the heart axis deviation to the right in a right ventricular load, as in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, or pulmonary embolism. In this section, we will discuss the P wave morphology. In a normal sinus rhythm, the P wave is positive in lead 2 and AVF, but could be biphasic in lead V1. If the P wave is enlarged, so is the atria. A right atrial enlargement equals a pulmonary P, while a left atrial enlargement equals a mitral P. Right atrial enlargement can result from increased pressure in the pulmonary artery. For example, after a pulmonary embolization, the width of the P wave does not change. Left atrial enlargement is often seen in mitral valve insufficiency, resulting in backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium subsequently, increasing local pressure. Caused by the right coronary artery, 10% of patients with myocardial infarction will be suspected with atrial infarction. This being of minor importance hemodynamically, these are sometimes missed. In order to detect from the ECG rhythm, the PTA depressor or elevation is an indicator. In this section, we'll cover QRS morphology. QRS complexes can be looked at for a sign of previous myocardial infarction and our left or right ventricular hypertrophy. In this picture, we can see that normal QRS will change gradually from an acute myocardial infarction to recovery, but will always show signs of an older wound. In this section, we will cover ST morphology. The ST segment represents ventricular repolarization. During repolarization, the cardiomyocyte, which are the cardiac muscle cells, elongates and prepare for the next heartbeat. On the ECG, the repolarization phase starts at the junction or J point and continues until the T wave ends. The ST segment is normally at or near the baseline. The most important cause of ST segment elevation is acute ischemia. Other causes are acute pericarditis, pulmonary embolism, hypothermia, and just to name a few. Characteristic of early repolarizations are an upward concave elevation of the RST segment, or a slurred downstroke of R wave, or distinct J point, or sometimes both, large symmetrical T waves, and here we can see an example of an acute inferior MI. The conclusion is the summary of our observation. The example of conclusions are sinus tachycardia with ST elevation likely caused by acute myocardial infarction 
or previous infarction combined with an acute lateral myocardial infarction, or simply normal Lukigi. There's a lot more to learn on art affection and ECG interpretation on those reference sites which were used to complete this presentation, such as ecgpedia.org, medscape.com, and the American Art Association at art.org. If you would like to have more information on this topic, you can go to drager.ca slash education. It is d-r-a-e-g-e-r dot c-a slash education. Thank you.